Many people get nervous about taking their car to the repair shop. It's the anticipation while you wait for the final diagnostic, an estimate on repair costs. Sometimes the repair costs can be shocking, but stop blaming the mechanic. I'm not saying it's because I'm in the trade. Actually, we should blame car makers for creating a monopoly on replacement car parts. Today, I'm talking about why car maintenance and repairs are so expensive. What do automakers and pharmaceutical companies both have in common? Believe it or not, it's their business model. You see, pharmaceutical companies are some of the most profitable companies in the world, and that's thanks to the lack of competition in the industry. In the U.S., drug makers have the exclusive right to sell a prescription drug for up to 12 years before generics are evolved to appear in the market. That's why these companies can raise their price of drugs as high as they want for at least 12 years. Since there are literally no other alternatives available on the market, if you think about it, pretty much, it's legalized monopoly for 12 years. And in the meantime, people who are suffering real illnesses have very little choice, and they're the ones who pay. Well, the car industry has been trying to replicate that very model. And they do this by increasingly patenting replacement parts for their cars. Proprietary high-tech engines might be understandable in a way, but I'm talking about even patenting general things like headlights, defenders, and even mirrors. So well, let's say you get in a car accident. Well, now you can't just choose from a bunch of generic parts because repair shops have to use patent parts from the manufacturer. And obviously, these aren't cheap, especially for you as a consumer. These design patents are a lot easier to obtain than traditional patents for inventions. And they are technically only supposed to be limited to ornamental items that have a specific appearance. But once you start allowing component parts to be patented, like the grill of a Ford Focus, you're really starting to stretch that definition. And that's exactly what car companies are doing today. By doing this, companies are creating a profitable patent and forced monopoly in aftermarket replacement parts. Consumers are left with little or no choice, and these design patents last for 14 years, which is basically the life of your car, so to speak, if you consider the average American keeps his car for 12 years. Just look at the stats. Since 2005, design patents issued on collision repair parts have more than doubled. So this is actually a trend in the industry. But this all really started back in 2008. Ford obtained patents for several collision repair parts for the 2004 F-150. That included patents for things like grills, head and tail lamps, side view mirrors, and bumpers. Soon after, Keystone Automotive Industries and few other companies wanted to import alternative parts from overseas factories. They certainly tried, but then Ford filed an official complaint against them with the International Trade Commission. Ford alleged patent infringement. Later that same year, ITC took Ford's side on seven of the patents, and then they barred the importation of any competing replacements into the U.S. Ultimately, both parties agreed to reach a settlement in the matter, but this gave further impetus to the car industry that patents for replacements would hold up to legal scrutiny. When courts find that a patent has been infringed, the patent owner is entitled to all the gross profits from that product's sale. That's regardless of whether the design feature played any role at all in a consumer's decision. So, guess the top three companies that have the most patents? Well, it's Ford, Toyota, and Honda. Just to put the sheer magnitude of that into perspective, consider this. The car industry generates the third most patents filings of any business sector. The only two companies who generate more patent filings are those in computing and telecommunications. But it's not just the car industry. There are other industries that are also infamous for using design patents to kill the market for replacement parts. Think of things like even razors and ink cartridges. We all know these products are also notorious for relatively high prices. Everyone knows that original equipment manufacturer or OEM parts are a lot more expensive than generic ones. The American Insurance Association estimated that competing generic replacement parts are typically 34 to 83 percent less expensive. It's estimated generic parts could save consumers up to 2.4 billion dollars every year. But automakers monopoly on design parts is ever more on the rise. To be honest, most consumers don't always recognize the difference in car parts. But either way, their insurers pick up the tab and consumers feel it eventually in higher car insurance premiums. Today, if this patented practice were applied to every car part, it's estimated to cost insurers an extra $1.5 billion per year. 
Automakers claim that OEM replacement parts are more reliable. But what's the truth? Opponents claim that a lot of the parts come off the same exact assembly lines and that the only thing that's different is one's labeled OEM and the other isn't. But if you're thinking that companies like Ford actually create these OEM parts, that's not necessarily the case. These big car companies just hold profitability patents on parts. Actually, it's independent suppliers that manufacture the majority of the car's parts and internal systems these days. Did you know that the top 10 suppliers capture 60% of the total revenue? And then there's planned obsolescence. Basically, this is a strategy whereby a company purposely manufactures something to decrease in performance or outright break after a period of time. The purpose is to move consumers to upgrade to a newer model or spend hundreds or even thousands to fix the model they already have. If you haven't seen my video on planned obsolescence, check it out. Anyway, this is one way car companies are able to hide the real cost of a car. So let's say you're an engineer. All you have to do is engineer a few key components to fail in five years and just after the warranty expires. This allows car makers to sell their cars for less because they know they'll get the big bucks when parts fail or get damaged in an accident. This ensures the other leg of their business, which is sales of replacement parts. Car makers control 73% of the replacement parts market, and they don't have plans of slowing down anytime soon. Believe it or not, automakers have even tried to use the Digital Millennium Copyright Act to stop owners from being able to modify their own cars. Imagine that. But there are people who want to challenge all this. Take, for example, well, the Parts Act. It stands for Promoting Automotive Repair, Trade, and Sales. A bipartisan coalition proposed this legislation to deal with restrictive car design patents. Californian members of Congress, Republican Daryl Issa and Democrat Zoe Lofgren, proposed these reforms to address the problem. This act limits the length of time which a design patent could be enforced against aftermarket manufacture of cosmetic car parts. Under this bill, car makers would still be protected from competing generics for up to 14 years. But the intent of the act was to reduce design patents on collision repair parts to 30 months. And then, during that time, alternative suppliers could test and develop their own parts before bringing them to market. This act would prevent car makers from copying another company's design models, and it would encourage competition for the parts aftermarket. It sounds just a novel. But sadly, versions of it haven't gone very far. Even though this act was introduced in 2013, there are similar resolutions in effect in the United Kingdom, Australia, and the European Union. There are even more reasons why car manufacturers and repair costs have gone up in the past 30 years. Modern cars today are just so much more complex than the older ones. Now today, the average new car has 30,000 parts, and they have between 50 to 100 separate computers. These control everything from the engine management, acceleration, steering, brakes, airbags, air conditioning, locks, in-car displays, and even your infotainment system. Cars today use a massive 100 million lines of computer code. Put into perspective, Android operating systems today are powered by just 12 million lines of code. It's only going to get more complicated in the future. And then there's self-driving cars. Once these become more mainstream in the market, car repair costs surely won't be going down anytime soon. Self-driving cars will require even more comprehensive computer power, which obviously means more cost to you. Now, it's true, older cars are definitely cheaper to buy and repair, but were they more reliable? Today in the U.S., the average car spends about 11.6 years on the road. But back in the 1950s and 60s, cars were scrapped when they were 7 or 8 years old. And this was well before they reached 100,000 miles for most people. Cars lasted about 10,000 miles, and exhaust systems had to be replaced every 5 years. So older cars weren't as reliable as you might have thought. Really, the biggest difference between modern and older cars has to be their onboard computers. In the 1970s, the Environmental Protection Agency mandated standards for tailpipe emissions, so manufacturers had to use electronic controls to manage fuel injection systems that cleared up the air. Think of things like spark plug firing and fuel air mixtures, but these systems also increased the cost by a lot. A Ford F-150 was $5,697 in 1980, which is equivalent to less than 20 grand in today's dollars. Today, the F-150 base base price starts at $30,000. Now, there's some good to this. Onboard computers have made diagnosing car problems a lot easier for mechanics. In the 1980s, the Society of Automotive Engineers created a universal system called Onboard Diagnostic System, also known as OBD2. This system became mandatory for manufacturers in 1996. With a new modern car, all you have to do is plug in the reader to a connection below the dashboard and you get a diagnostic code. And this code can be cross-referenced with a handbook of codes to see what it means to then fix your car. 
When the computers and modern cars start to fail, it'll be very tricky and expensive to diagnose and then fix them. Electronics don't like heat. The car interior is like a heat sink during the summer, especially if you live in the southern U.S. In the south, ambient car temperatures of a car parked in a hot summer sun can reach 130 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit for extended periods of time. So let's say you decide to park your car at the airport. When you finally return, it's like a sauna inside. And your onboard computer is completely busted because of it. Now you have to take it to a repair shop. And that will not be cheap. Another big factor influencing the cost of car maintenance has to do with mechanics, or lack thereof. Did you know that the number of people employed as automotive service technicians and mechanics has been growing at a rate of 3.37%? That's from 757,826 people in 2018 to 783,369 people in 2019. Yet the projected job growth for these positions for the next 10 years is minus 3.67%. Year after year, fewer and fewer young people are joining the industry. Fewer mechanic means higher repair costs. So why are so many people uninterested today in working in the car maintenance and repair industry? Well, for one, there's a general stigma against manual labor jobs. Also, this trade in particular isn't one that gets promoted as a top career choice like other jobs are. One research survey found that only 15% of auto service technicians are likely to recommend their job as a career choice. Did you know that about 46,000 service technicians will be needed to fill roles that are being left open through 2026. But there just isn't enough support for the industry today. Automakers keep reducing manufacturer repair time. Auto technicians are expected to diagnose and fix problems in a very tight time frame. And it's only getting tighter. This flat rate discourages experienced auto technicians from using their time to coach recent graduates instead. Less coaches mean less training. Less training means less people who are motivated to learn the job hands-on, which means less mechanics, thereby increasing repair and maintenance costs. But now you tell me, have you noticed your car maintenance costs going up in the past few years? Please share your experience by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.